This is the road that leads to a commission in the finest service in the world, the Royal Navy. The famous old ship Britannia, where cadets were trained, has gone. But a greater institution has taken her place. And the schoolboys of today learn to be the officers of tomorrow as cadets in the Royal Naval College, Dartmouth. Cadets join at the age of 13 and a half and stay for 11 terms till they are nearly 17. For their first two terms, they join a junior house, Drake, going afterwards to one of the other five houses named after famous admirals, Hawke, Blake, Grenville, Exmouth, St. Vincent. Naval terms are used throughout the college. There's a senior and junior gun room for each house. Two or three cadet captains share a cabin. They are senior cadets and look after house affairs. The captain of the college and the staff of naval officers are in charge of discipline and teach nautical subjects. They gather between duties in the wardroom. The common rooms, the headquarters of the civilian masters who teach general subjects under the headmaster. At 7.30 in the morning, or seven bells, the college turns out for the day's work. Each cadet has a chest for his clothes, and he's got to keep it ship shape. At eight o'clock, breakfast is ready in the mess room. Then at 8.40, the college assembles for a few minutes physical jerks, followed by divisions, exactly as they would on board ship. The chaplain reads prayers, and the white ensign, the flag of the Royal Navy, is hoisted. Then the college marches off by houses to get to work. A ship's bell in the central hall, which is called the quarter deck, summons them. All cadets salute the quarter deck on entering, just as one day they will salute the quarter decks of His Majesty's ships. All normal subjects are inflicted on the cadets mathematics. Languages, of course, French. Un petit soldat, posté au bord de la morel, derrière la carcasse d'un vieux bateau. Der Queen Mary ist ein Ozean. German. Ganz wichtig. Nun, was ist eine Fähre? Are we Germans? Am Bagan. Ah, na, yes, John. Your Bob. And Russian. And Lisky? He is rich, but she is even richer. Electricity. The cadets, in fact, get a first-class, all-round education. Engineering plays an important part, not only for future engineer officers, but for everyone. There are specialized subjects that the cadets have to master. Here they are, learning to use a sextant, and here taking compass bearings across the river. Then they check their bearings with a chart to find the magnetic deviation. The seamanship room is provided with working models of every part of the ships in which the cadets will one day serve. A petty officer instructs some of the younger cadets there's a correct knot for every job aboard ship, and it's got to be learnt. You can't carry a book of instructions about with you in the Navy. Semaphore signalling has to be practised till it becomes a second nature. Ships are often controlled at sea by flag signals, and here cadets are acting as ships and obeying signals.
This is the gunnery room. It looks empty enough, but actually a practice shoot is going on. This corner is fitted as the control top of a battleship. Here's the target, a model ship three or four inches long. The cadets in the control top work out range, speed and elevation. Their orders are given to the transmitting station. Behind the target, the fall of the shells is calculated and after the proper time, there goes the salvo. Each cadet gets a shilling a week pocket money. An hour and a half more work and then games. The houses are divided into seniors, colts and juniors. They play each other at all the usual games and of course college teams play other schools. Tennis courts are available to all. Every cadet must learn to swim before he's allowed on the water without an officer or instructor. Boxing is optional. And so is this advanced work in the gym. Sailing is naturally one of the chief sports at Dartmouth. Here is the start of the weekly race when gigs, cutters and whalers compete for their houses. Collisions are by no means unheard of, and a handkerchief tied to a shroud registers a protest. After tea, there's time for leisure. Models are everywhere in Dartmouth, some for instruction, others for fun. Lots of battleships. This baby motor car has a petrol engine that works. Here's a square-rigged ship. The Britannia Aero Club makes its own aircraft and puts them through their tests, which are tough. Two evenings a week, there's dancing on the quarter deck. It's a centuries-old tradition in the Navy, and the officers join in actively. Then at 9.20 in the evening, each house turns in, each in its own wartime shelter. This party seems to have cut it pretty fine. At 9.35, the officer of the day goes round, and the day is over. On the Friday evening, preceding the half-term holiday, the quarter deck goes gay. Mothers, sisters and friends invade the college in their party frocks to dance to the marine band. Next morning, there's apt to be a bit of skylarking by the Drakes. By eight o'clock, the college is empty. Cadets whose parents have not come down for the holiday take supplies aboard for a 12-hour picnic. The college steamboat stands by to tear them up the river Dart, to sail and fish, to bathe and eat. The corridors are silent. Irregular verbs and magnetic deviation are forgotten for the whole of one long summer day. Hands to divisions. Sunday Divisions is the biggest parade of the week. And this Sunday, it is held under the proud eyes of mothers and the critical eyes of fathers, many of them in the service. The parade stands silent and to attention, while the colours are carried out by two senior cadet captains.
and the captain of the college escorts a visiting Commodore, father of one of the cadets, to inspect the parade. And so the cadets march off, past the saluting base, into the college. they go, the future officers of the Royal Navy, to carry on the high traditions of the great admirals of the past. Hawke, Blake, Grenville, Exmouth, St. Vincent, Nelson, to serve in His Majesty's ships, great and small, on every sea and on every ocean. Officers of that mighty silent service that is the pride and unfailing strength of the British Empire.